In this episode of The Pit Stop, today we're going to be addressing orders that do not have VIN numbers. You are now entering the Pit Stop Podcast with OEM Interactive, helping you sell more parts and accessories online in 10 minutes or less. I wanted to do a quick segment here today for um, for our partners and wanted to you know get your thoughts on on a couple things. Um, I've been talking to a lot of our partners here over the past couple of weeks, and one of the big things that um, I'm trying to address and trying to really uncover is uh, is canceled orders. How can we turn canceled orders into um, orders fulfilled? The common denominator with everything is uh, customers, consumers are not putting in VIN numbers in right. in the orders, making it um, very difficult f- to fulfill the orders. Um, and um, a lot of our partners are, are, are canceling these orders or the orders are getting returned. And I wanted to um, try to communicate to all of our partners as well as you know consumers too on what can we do you know to educate our consumers mm-hmm. Um, on, you know, the importance of adding a VIN number or how can we turn, you know, what, what things can we do both from an external communication standpoint, as well as an internal communications and system standpoint to turn these canceled orders into orders fulfilled. And so I wanted to get your thoughts on, on that and, and kind of spitball some, some solutions, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of, uh, money out the window. Right, because you can think of all right. How are we going to get more customers? How are we going to get uh, increase our our revenue? But before you start thinking about how we're going to get more customers, how can we keep the customers that already came to our website but didn't convert or even converted, but we didn't get their money because they they messed up on the owner by not putting in their VIN number. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you you hit the nail um, uh, right on the on the button when you were saying. I don't even know if the nail on the button, it makes sense, doesn't it? The nail, nail, the, the nail on the head. There we go. The nail on the head when you said- uh, You're not talk- a carpenter. No, I'm not a carpenter. <laughs> uh, just you make that clear. I'm not a carpenter, I guess. Seamstress. Uh, yeah, I'm a seamstress. <laughs> so I'm a very good seamstress. Uh, I'll remember that when you want a shirt. And I'm going to be like, ah, oh, you made fun of me for my seamstress skills. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah, you. I think the first step is to educate the consumer because there are a lot of consumers that don't even know what a VIN number is. Um, where to find where, it, where to find it. And the more you can educate the consumer, the less likely that you're going to have to follow up with them to put a VIN number because they're going to put it in already because they understand a, what it is and B, what the importance of that VIN number is. Yeah. So where do we, you know, how do we educate them? And right. you know, what, what can we do from a messaging standpoint to educate these consumers that are coming into Mm -hmm. our website um, and, um, you know, jumping onto either the homepage, Mm. um, maybe, you know, the product page, you know, wherever, however they're getting to to the website, what, you know, what, what can, what can our partners do? Yeah. So I think you have to think, you know, where are these consumers coming from? Are they going to the homepage? Are they coming to the product page? And I think it's both. They're coming from the homepage. They're coming to specific product pages. Uh, they're coming from YouTube, ref- you know, other referral traffic. They're coming in directly. They're putting your URL in directly. So with that being said, you know, we need to be educating them as much as possible in every step. So we should be um, educating them on the homepage. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have an image of maybe a vehicle where they have call outs? This is where you can find the VIN number. You can find it on the door sill of your vehicle, maybe on the dashboard, mm-hmm. wherever it may be. Do you have an image that can... Um, educate the consumer? Do you have copy on your website, um, on the homepage, on the product page? Do you have copies saying the importance of putting in the VIN number? Putting in your VIN number will help ensure proper fitment for the part that you're ordering. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a lot of brake pads for Honda Civics, but you know maybe you have a 95 Honda Civic and that brake pad part is different than a 90, uh, 99. Mm-hmm. And so that's why putting that VIN number in is important. So you, do you have copy? Maybe it's a video. Maybe it's a quick 30 second video you have on the homepage or on the checkout page uh, about, you know, this is the importance of a VIN number and this is where you can find it. So there's, you know, there's images, there's copy, there's video. There are all different types of uh, ways to educate the consumer throughout that purchase process. Absolutely. And, um, in, you know, in terms of like, uh, how do we create this, you know, 
uh, how do we create this copy? How do we create this video? You know, how do we create these assets, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the one of the things that we see from a copy standpoint is um, you don't want to be intimidating. And is is we're we're putting up like big red bold text right. and saying like, hey, stop. And and that becomes a little bit of you know to your point it's it, it's intimidating and it's a lot of big red text and it's 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 you want scaring it's scaring it's them deterring, away deterring it's deterring yeah. customers away you want to express the importance of putting in this VIN number so they get the right part but at the same time you don't want to intimidate them and scare them away by having a paragraph of red text and bold saying if you don't do this you don't do that it's very uninviting and it can mm -hmm. definitely cause users to jump off because they they feel like oh, I, I don't I don't think I'm going to be doing this right I'm you know th this is a little too scary for me I don't, yeah, don't want to order uh, no absolutely and and then from a video standpoint um you know it's as simple as you know taking your you know Smartphone. You know, just taking your, 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 your smartphone, your iPhone, and, and going out and doing a quick video recording of yourself yeah. and so that it, it's you know branded by you know by you and by you guys your are, company. You're doing it on the sales side all the time. You're doing walk arounds and mm -hmm. uh, showing off features in a car. You just same thing. Do it on the part side. Quick thirty second yeah. video of you showing these consumers where they can find the the VIN number on their car and uh, you know put it on these product pages. Put it on the home page. Put it at the checkout page. Yeah. So um, you know you've got a couple good uh, points here, um, Chris and I and I just want to you know hammer these hammer these home. Where do we put this information? We put it on the home page. We put it on the individual product page. We put it on the checkout page, um, whether it be via copy, uh, whether that be via video. Um, highly recommend via video on, especially on the individual product mm -hmm. pages and on the checkout page, putting some copy in there, not in red, but something that is a little more less intrusive and evasive right. and scary. Mm -hmm. um, orange, green, um, you know, maybe the, the, the font is a little bigger right. and um, and it stands out a little more and it's less wordy, but it's just communicating in a nice, soft, easy manner. Right, and I think uh, less wordy is very good too because if you have to read a paragraph, it's like, it's, you know, we're not gonna do that. Consumers yeah. aren't gonna do that. So less is more. And you know the last one could just be images, and honestly, it could be a mix of all of them. Maybe mm -hmm. you have an image on the homepage of a vehicle with callouts of you know this is what a VIN number is, this is where you can find it. Then on the product page, maybe uh, it's a you know it's a video. Maybe it's a mix of all of it. You know it doesn't have to be one, and it doesn't have to just be on the homepage. You can do it throughout your website in different mm -hmm. types of uh, formats. Yeah, and then and I think the last the the one of the last uh, places uh, safety nets is on the in the confirmation email. Right. Yeah, that's a good so, one. So yeah. you know, we um, the the consumers place the order. Maybe they didn't know about the, the you know putting the VIN number in there, and they've they've gone through. They missed all of those those stops on the home page, on the checkout page, or on the individual product page, on the checkout page. And we send them an email saying, "Have you or did you put um, the VIN number in? And if you haven't, check." These locations, you can find the VIN number on any one of these, you know, any one of these areas of your vehicle, right. and please send us that VIN number. Right, call right. us, uh, email us back, provide them with the information that they need. Um, again, these are just safety nets. If mm -hmm. they miss these, um, uh, you know, the education on the home page, product page, checkout page, and they still didn't put their VIN number in, send them this information in the confirmation email. Every uh, order that these customers are getting, you, nine times out of 10, they're getting a confirmation email. So it's another good area of opportunity to put that there. But if they even miss that, you know, if they're if the last case scenario, you know, everything that we've talked about is trying to make your job easier, where you mm -hmm. don't have to always use your bandwidth and your time because we know you guys are all busy. That's why we're trying to educate the consumers because the more we educate them, the less time that you guys are going to have to take out of your day to educate educate them personally. But if all of, all of that fails, it, the last step is yeah. yeah so there, the, you know, to your point, like there's two there, there's two sides of the equation, right? Like the consumers the consumers are not in most cases are not parts. And automotive ex right. experts. So we can only do so much that's within our control. As long as we can do and, everything that's in our control, which is providing them this education, providing that's them all we can all do. All that yeah. information. And then if all else fails, what do we do internally from a, a, a dealer side of, of things? Because we've been saying this and hammering this home 
all the time, and I'm going to say it one more time mm. again, um, and, and it won't be the last time that I say this. Stop. So you being used an, it right. You it, said hammer it home again. It, yes. I got the I got the construction. It, uh, <laughs> you're, you're a seamstress. No, uh, I'm kidding. Uh, um, but not hitting um, on seamstress. Like, yeah. It's a very lucrative uh, so career. we're we're, we're I'm going to hammer it home again. It won't be the last time. You know, stop being an order taker. Right. Like and in you know what I'm what we've been hearing a lot of is okay we get the order and you know we don't have time to email or call everyone that yeah. um, puts in that does not put in a VIN number and to me you you know you have to make time or you need to find time or create a system that offers you and allows you the time to do this because literally what you're doing is just you know you're just flushing dollars yeah. down the toilet by not by, by, you already, by not finding that time you already spent the money theoretically on the advertising to get this consumer to your site so not only did you lose ad, ad dollars right there but these are qualified buyers they had intent to buy they actually they did buy they purchased it they just didn't put in the vin number mm -hmm. so are you just going to cancel that order because you don't have time to you know, to handle that, you, you brought up a great point earlier about t-shirts. Yeah. It will, we'll bring it back to your seamstress, uh, you know, days. <laughs> okay. So, you, you know, if, if, if you're buying a t-shirt online, right. And, 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 and this may be a bad analogy, but, uh, because most, you know, t-shirt or shirt, um, um, you know, clothing e-com sites, it, it won't let you purchase without selecting a size. But, you know, if you were to buy a shirt, and you didn't select the the size. Well, what would you what would you be sending? You, you know, like how would I, as the fulf the fulfiller, the 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 seller, you know, know what to send you? Yeah, you wouldn't. And, so you would follow up and, and say, so, did you want a large, a medium? You yeah. want to just cancel the order and so, say, I don't have time to do that. How would you follow up with them? I mean, there's there's if somebody doesn't put in a VIN number. How are you going to follow up with them? Well, in order to order something to begin with. Usually, and you can set these parameters up. Everybody can make certain um, fields mandatory or not, but most of the time you have to put in your email address. Mm -hmm. So there's a point of uh, contact right there. You can email this person and say, hey, you know, thank you so much for your business. It looks like you ordered X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. but I noticed you didn't put in a VIN number. In order for us to make sure we're sending you the, the right part, um, we're gonna need that VIN number. So you can email them. And it doesn't have to be, you don't have to write this email out every time. Exactly. And can, it can be a templated right. response. And a Because lot we of know what's going to happen. It's it's going to happen. A lot of these e-com platforms have the ability to create um, templated responses. And, you know, you can just send this out, like select templated response. You did not, you know, add VIN number. Please, you, you know, we can't fulfill this until you send us the VIN number. Do you need help? Um, you know, whatever, whatever those uh, parameters are. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, if the problem with emailing is, you know, the, the potential problem with emailing now is the turnaround time. You know, now you're waiting on the, the client right. or the, the excuse consumer. me, the, the consumer to get back to you. Um, so the probably the simplest, fastest way is to actually get on the phone yep. and, you know, stop being an order taker, be proactive and get on the phone and make that, um, you know, 30 second call yeah. or two minute call. Because, you know, it, not only are you going to close, not only are you going to, uh, you know, close that sale and, and ship that part out and, and make, you know, revenue from that, from that sale, you got to think of the lifetime value of this customer. Because that's that's mm -hmm. the, honestly the biggest complaint. I don't have enough time to do it. Well, if somebody walked into your parts department, into your brick and mortar parts department store, and wanted to order a part and they didn't have their VIN number handy, or what you didn't know what a, you're not gonna say, oh, sorry, I'm not gonna help you. Of you're, course not. You're gonna walk outside, you're gonna pull that information, mm -hmm. you're gonna walk them through, and that process is gonna take you know minutes, and you're not just gonna like rush them through. Right, so what's right? the difference and between somebody ordering online that doesn't have a VIN, and you take the time to do it? It's it, You have to deliver the same customer experience and customer service um, as you would somebody standing right in front of you. Remember, you know, these consumers are not, they're, they're buying the experience and they're not buying the product mm -hmm. and they're buying the product. Yes. But they're buying the experience. They chose to buy through you. Right. And they're buying that product through you, but you know, you have to give them that great experience from, you know, 
the 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 beginning to the end and to your point the lifetime value of that customer and what does that represent and you've spent x to get them but what is that lifetime the lifetime value of that customer actually going to be worth and and i and i think that that if you're not thinking about that now that's very short term uh mm-hmm. thinking so um you, you know we need to stop being right. just order takers and um, do whatever we can to, you know, turn these, you know, canceled orders into fulfilled orders. Right. And, and, you know, I think we're running short on time here. It's, 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 it's a pit stop. It's 10 minutes or less. And so we, we got to get in, get, a, get out. And I think the last time we talked, or the last thing we talked about this is, you know, there's lots of text messaging, um, automated text messaging, right. uh, uh solutions services out there, yeah. and solutions out there. They're not that expensive, you, you know, uh, $10 a month, $25 a month. And for X amount of text messages, um, you know, 500 text messages per month, and you're not going to use 500 text messages per month in, in most cases. Right. But if they're, if you're requiring them to put in a phone number and some people are going to give you a legit number and other people are, are not. Right. Um, but, uh, you can use that as a, a safety net as, as, as well, because nobody, I mean, you're kind of feel lost if you don't have this next to you and you know, you get a text message, Hey, um, you you know, Chris, this is, you know, Bob from XYZ, you know, um, parts online and we didn't get the VIN number in the order. And, you know, can you give us a call back? We'll walk you through the process, whatever, whatever it might be. That's now you're hitting them with an email, a call, and a text message, right. palm in their hands. You're you're doing everything that you can to to fulfill this order. In all of these, frankly, you know, are not going to take up that much time. No, and you're fine tuning systems. If you have ten thousand dollars worth of canceled orders every month, but you want to you you want to increase revenue month over month, well, what's the difference between saving ten thousand dollars? of lost revenue versus gaining a, a brand new $10,000. Let's look internally what we can do to fine tune our systems and then let's think about growth. Let's mm-hmm. let's, let's strengthen the foundation because I think that's one thing that every that we want to go growth, growth, growth. Well, let's strengthen the foundation and think about that, you know, incremental growth yeah. from there. No, great point. Um, so guys, um, stop being order takers. Um, you know, really peel back the layers on, um, you know, on, on these individual orders, uh, get out there, communicate both from an external, um, messaging standpoint, both, uh, you know, on your, on your website, putting all those safety nets in, in, in place. And then from, you know, internally, what can we do internally, email, call, text, uh, whatever, whatever that might be. Um, it may take a little bit of time to put these systems in place, but you're going to get so much more back in, in, in the long run. So put the time in now and save your, save yourself time, money, resources in, in the long run. Aaron Waters Chris in Campola. the seamstress. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we are out. Yeah.